When most people hear the word desert, they imagine a lifeless expanse, endless yellow sand under a blazing sun, nights so cold they bite your bones, and survival that feels impossible. A place where nothing grows, where the wind itself seems hostile. But in Inner Mongolia, China, the Kabuki Desert is rewriting the rules. Here, in a landscape once dominated by dust and despair, something extraordinary is happening. What was once a barren sea of sand is now slowly awakening, transformed by human ingenuity and one of the most ambitious ecological projects in modern history. How did $360 million and 120 billion cubic meters of water turn this unforgiving desert into a thriving oasis? That's the story we're about to uncover. To understand just how monumental this transformation is, we first need to step into the Kabuki Desert itself, a place where nature tests every boundary. The Kabuki Desert stretches across Inner Mongolia like a golden ocean, 400 kilometers long, 50 kilometers wide, covering nearly 13,900 square kilometers. That makes it the seventh largest desert in China, a place where the land itself seems to have surrendered to the elements. More than 60% of the desert is dominated by moving sand dunes, some soaring as high as 60 meters. Chains of dunes march across the landscape, shifting with the wind, reshaping the horizon every day. These dunes aren't just beautiful, they're a constant threat. Flying sand blankets homes, blocks roads, and can even smother farmland. And when the desert stirs, Beijing and Tangan pay the price, swallowed in haze as storms sweep down from the north. For the people who call this land home, life has always been a battle against nature itself. Sandstorms threaten their crops. Harsh winds erode the soil. Every day is a struggle. This is a desert that tests the limits of human endurance. And for centuries, it seemed almost impossible to tame. But the desert's dangers don't end with sandstorms. Just a stone's throw away, another force of nature was waiting to challenge life here, the Yellow River. The Kabuki Desert isn't just a battlefield against sand. Lurking nearby is the Yellow River, China's second longest river, carrying both life and danger. During flood season, its waters swell with unstoppable force, threatening to burst through embankments and flood surrounding communities. For generations, residents lived under the shadow of this dual threat, scorching sandstorms in the dry season and devastating floods when the river surged. Every year, millions of yuan were poured into shoring up embankments, trying desperately to protect homes and farmland. Yet, even with these efforts, sandstorms and floods often struck together. Crops were destroyed, homes were lost, families were forced to flee. Life here was a high-stakes gamble with nature, and for many, survival felt like the only victory. This wasn't just a desert. It was a gauntlet of extremes. And for decades, it seemed destined to remain uninhabitable, a place where human dreams clashed endlessly with the raw power of the elements. But in the face of this relentless challenge, the Chinese government decided to dream bigger. Not just to survive, but to transform the desert entirely. Faced with a land that seemed impossible to tame, the Chinese government didn't just aim to protect residents, they envisioned transformation. They dared to imagine a desert that could bloom, a place once ruled by sandstorms and floods, now teeming with life. This vision became the Lingling Desert Control Project. It wasn't a small undertaking. $360 million were poured into building a 700-kilometer canal system, designed to channel the waters of the Yellow River directly into the heart of the Kabuki Desert. The goal was audacious, not just to stop disasters, but to turn barren sand into fertile farmland. The scale of the project was staggering. Engineers had to conquer shifting dunes, gale force winds, and a hostile environment that seemed to push human effort back at every turn. It was a gamble of money, manpower, and ingenuity, a test of whether human determination could truly bend nature. And bending nature was only the beginning. 
To bring life to this desert, engineers face challenges that push the limits of imagination and skill. Turning the dream into reality meant engineering on an epic scale. Canals were carved through dunes, branch canals snaked into low-lying areas, and pipelines were laid to deliver water for both irrigation and livestock. Every meter of construction was a battle against nature itself. The challenges were immense. Strong winds blew sand like knives. Quicksand swallowed heavy machinery. Steel pipelines, weighing tons, had to be transported and positioned with precision. One mistake, one slight misalignment, could collapse entire sections of the canal. And yet, engineers persisted, day after day, braving dust storms and punishing heat. Crossing rivers and wetlands demanded creativity. To protect the Yellow River's delicate ecosystem, the team designed overhead pipelines, complex bridges, and culverts, ensuring the water could flow smoothly without harming the environment. It was not just construction, it was a symphony of precision, resilience, and ingenuity. Through grit and unyielding determination, human hands and human minds turned sand into the channels of life. The desert was on the brink of change. But the true secret of this transformation wasn't just engineering. It lay in the Yellow River itself, carrying a hidden ingredient that would bring the desert to life. The Yellow River is often called China's Mother River, and here it played a role far beyond mere water supply. Its waters carry something extraordinary, yellow mud, rich in minerals and organic matter. Every bucket of river water is more than 90% liquid. It's a nutrient-packed elixir for the desert. This mud has a remarkable property. When it meets water, it expands into a sticky, protective film. Loose sand grains clump together, creating a more stable soil structure. At the same time, the minerals and organic nutrients feed plants, giving them the sustenance to grow in a place that once seemed utterly barren. The genius of the project was in this perfect synergy human engineering channels the river, and nature provides the soil and nutrients. Together, they create fertile ground where none existed before. Slowly, almost imperceptibly at first, the desert begins to breathe. This is the moment when sand transforms into soil, and a desert, once lifeless, starts its journey toward life. With fertile soil now possible, the next question was whether life could truly take root. And the first signs of hope came through early agricultural experiments. The first experiments were modest, yet monumental. In 2016, locals planted 5,210 acres of rice in the newly irrigated desert soil. For the first time in memory, water, mud, and human effort combined to make this barren land productive. This wasn't just about crops. It was proof that life could thrive where it once seemed impossible. The desert's soil could support not just survival, but growth. And soon, the potential for diversity became clear. By 2017, over 100 types of crops were being cultivated here. Food crops, cash crops, feed crops, shrubs, trees, and even traditional Chinese medicinal plants. The transformation was tangible. Crops were sprouting, local diets improved, and a renewed sense of hope began to ripple through the community. The desert was no longer a place to endure, it was becoming a place to build, to grow, and to dream. But it wasn't just agriculture that brought life back to the Kabuki Desert. Residents also began integrating livestock and creating a fully sustainable ecosystem. As the desert soil became fertile, local residents didn't stop at planting crops. They began integrating livestock into the landscape, creating a balanced ecosystem where farmland and grassland supported one another. Sheep and cattle grazed on the pastures, while manure enriched the soil for crops. It was a harmonious cycle, nature and humans working together. This combination of agriculture and animal husbandry transformed the region into a true oasis. Families who once struggled against dust storms now had steady sources of food, income, and security. Crops flourished, herds thrived, and local markets began to hum with new activity. The economic impact was immediate. 
income levels rose, livelihoods diversified, and people found opportunity in a place that had once offered only hardship. What was once unlivable became not just habitable, but prosperous. And the transformation didn't stop with the people. As the land recovered, measurable ecological changes began to reshape the very heart of the desert. The Kabuki Desert's revival was more than human success. It was ecological. In just over a decade, vegetation coverage skyrocketed from less than 1% to 65%. Tree planting efforts achieved a survival rate of more than 80%, while once roaming sand dunes were finally stabilized. The desert was literally turning green. Biodiversity surged. Over 20 types of plants returned, alongside more than 10 species of water birds. Nearly 100 square kilometers of water surfaces and wetlands now dotted the landscape, controlling 8.4 million acres of previously shifting sand. It was a full-scale ecological transformation, a living proof that even the harshest landscapes can recover. The desert was no longer a wasteland. It had become a thriving ecosystem, a green miracle born from careful engineering, nature's resilience, and human determination. With the environment restored, the focus shifted to the people themselves, the social and economic impact of this newfound oasis. The revival of the Kabuki Desert wasn't just an environmental miracle. It was a social and economic one. Tens of thousands of people moved to the newly irrigated areas, leaving behind the hardships of barren land and dust storms. They arrived with hope, and the desert delivered opportunity. Annual net income soared, reaching around $270,000 for local communities from crops, livestock, and sustainable farming practices. People could plan for the future, knowing that their work would yield results. Life became safer, more stable, and more prosperous. This was more than wealth. It was resilience in action. Communities that once survived on the edge of disaster were now thriving. Human ingenuity had reshaped the environment, and in doing so, reshaped the very fabric of daily life. And yet, this success was not just about water and crops. It was part of a larger vision, a holistic approach to managing the desert that would secure its long-term future. Water alone wasn't enough to secure the Kabuki Desert's transformation. The Chinese government implemented a suite of complementary projects to ensure long-term ecological stability. Farmland was returned to forest. Overgrazing was strictly controlled. The Three North Shelter Belt program created vast green belts to block winds and sandstorms. Even desert-based solar projects were integrated to combat desertification while generating clean energy. These efforts were carefully coordinated, addressing desertification from every angle. Water, vegetation, energy, and human activity were all woven into a single, sustainable strategy. The result? a desert no longer defined by scarcity, but by balance. This diversified governance didn't just green the desert, it created a thriving ecosystem, enhanced biodiversity, and improved the quality of life for local residents. It was a blueprint for how systematic, multi-layered planning can turn ecological nightmares into success stories. And the impact of this approach hasn't gone unnoticed. The Kabuki Desert has become a global model for desert governance, the transformation of the Kabuki Desert has captured global attention. Once a cautionary tale of ecological degradation, it is now hailed as a model for reversing desertification. Scientists, policymakers, and environmentalists around the world study its methods, seeking lessons for deserts in Africa, the Middle East, and beyond. The key takeaway is simple yet profound. When engineering, science, and community engagement converge, desserts can be transformed. They can go from lifeless wastelands to fertile, productive landscapes that support both humans and wildlife. The Kabuki Desert demonstrates that ecological restoration is not just possible, it's scalable. It's a powerful reminder that humans are not merely passive observers of nature. With vision, perseverance, and ingenuity, we can repair, restore, and even enhance the world around us. And now, 
After more than a decade of transformation, it's time to reflect on the full journey from lifeless desert to thriving oasis and what it means for the future. The journey of the Kabuki Desert is nothing short of extraordinary. In just over a decade, a barren wasteland has been transformed into fertile farmland, flowing waterways, and vibrant communities. Human ingenuity, the power of the Yellow River, and sustained government vision came together to turn a desert into a thriving oasis. This is more than a story about ecological restoration. It's a story about hope, resilience, and the boundless potential of human creativity when paired with nature's gifts. What was once lifeless is now alive. What was once impossible is now reality. If this story inspires you, make sure to subscribe to our channel and turn on notifications. Join us as we explore more incredible stories of human innovation, environmental triumph, and the ways people are reshaping the world around them.